space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise, its continuing mission. To explore strange new worlds, to seek out new life and new civilizations, to boldly go where no man has gone before. We think Trek. We talk Trek. With you, we are Trek. Celebrate the Star Trek universe with us. For news, views and reviews. This is the Nerd Escape Podcast. This is the Nerd Escape Podcast. This is the Nerd Escape Podcast. Greetings ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the Nerd Escape Podcast. And this week we are talking about Discovery Season 3, Episode 3, The People of Earth. Reunited, Michael and the Discovery crew follow a message to Earth where Suru brokers a truce, Stamets meets Adrian, a human with an unusual past. And this episode was written by Bowie, Kim and Erica Lepato. I probably pronounced that wrong. And with me to discuss this fantastic episode is Damien and Linda. Hi guys. Hello. Hi. So, okay, crap, I have absolutely forgotten. So, <laughs> apart from me forgetting <laughs> what we're meant to be talking about the way we do this episode, I'm going to run this quickly off the top of my head. I'm going to take this over to Linda. So, first thoughts on this episode. What did you think? Uh, it. <clears throat> I, I, was, I was excited when I saw that it was a Freaks episode and a Bowie Erica episode because they're usually the good ones. Um, it kind of it, it kind of just felt like a story progression episode to me. It, it didn't feel like a you know anything compared to what we've seen in the first two episodes, which I loved. Um, so oh. it was it was it was good. I liked it. Liked it. Okay, good, good. And thanks for mentioning the one p- little piece of information I did forget about. Yes, this week's episode was directed by Jonathan Frakes. Sorry, Mister Riker. <laughs> and Damien, what was your first impressions of the episode? Yeah, um, I thought it was it was all right. I, I didn't. I wasn't wowed by it. Um, the 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 ship fan in me liked seeing new ships, um, but. Yeah, like I, I probably would agree with Linda. You know, there it was a little bit of, you know, setting the the lay of the land in the galaxy. You know, and um, bringing us up to mm. speed a little bit more with the thirty second century. But uh, yeah, it was okay. It was okay. Okay, so a little bit of disappointment from my two guys. I actually, for I really enjoyed this episode. I thought it was nice to get back to Earth. Um, I thought it was actually nicely paced. Um, and I thought it was kind of like interesting the fact just to establish that Earth had broken away from the Federation and Starfleet which is interesting because Starfleet should be Earth and the Federation was all of them together but I'm not going to rant I'm not going to get too upset about that one I've always wondered what would happen if the Federation broke away what would happen with Starfleet so yes okay Starfleet was well amalgamated into the Federation but I like the setup of this whole story which we'll, we'll get into just to establish that Earth has basically looked after its own and just the whole kind of they've just gone too much into self protection and are forgetting about the rest of the galaxy as in the whole plot of the episode where we find out that the villain that I was kind of hoping would be Azindi damn uh, I know another friend was kind of <laughs> hoping that it was Atolian because he thought he seen heat in the back. Damn, <laughs> it's a bloody human, <laughs> and it's another <laughs> another human from Stargate Atlantis. Christopher, I can't think of his surname, which is really really cool. So, any outstanding any part of this episode, uh, Damien, that you thought was yeah, this is really really cool. Uh, listen, come on, Captain Saru. Uh, finally, yeah. <laughs> you know um, that that was a, a great moment, and I liked Adira. Um, I, I thought her character was cool. Um, I thought it was very well acted, and um, Captain Endoya as well from the Earth Defense Force. I thought she was pretty cool um, as well. But I think Captain Saru. Um, 
was probably the, the best moment of the show. And I'm I'm going to continue what I was saying earlier in the previous episode reviews. I'm really digging um, Sonequa's character um, or her acting this season. Um, the kind of shifting time, like a year has gone for her. So she's not the same person. So I'm liking her kind of reintroduction to the crew and stuff like that as well. But Captain's through at the top of the list. Okay, and Linda, over to you. for What was your outstanding moment of this episode? Yeah, I liked um, Michael and Booker's uh, interaction, especially when they're getting changed into the uniforms. Um, it was, yeah, it was nice that they were kind of all pally and she, we totally see a different side to Michael again. Um, mm. And I I. Yeah, and I, I, we're not pirates. <laughs> <laughs> but um, and then I loved when Booker came out with bollocks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he hasn't really got the Starfleet um, tongue, <laughs> which is no harm. And I haven't seen a lot of complaints about the language he used, which is kind of good in yeah, a sense as well, as far else, as I'm yeah. concerned. Yeah. Uh, yeah my favorite me. moment, I think, would have. To be, I actually this is this is an, an unusual one for me. Uh, Stamets, I thought, was very good in this episode. I know a few people were kind of wondering why Stamets just decided to come clean with our new character, but I just thought it was so well done, and I like this side of Stamets. We've seen it briefly in other episodes, and I'd rather see more of this than the Sarky Stamets. I don't mind that when he's with Ty, but. I just thought it was a nice kind of scene between trying to suss out what she was up to and mm. what they're about. So, yeah, yeah I, I just liked that development with Stamets because we rarely see that kind of, um, you know, that uh, fun part of Stamets. It was a nice moment. So, out of five guys, and what's the rating out of five for this episode? Um, Linda I would give it a three I'd okay three. that's that's a drop okay so yeah and were you expecting more from this episode going back I, to Earth or oh yes definitely I wanted to see Earth I wanted to see more of Earth more than just a tree I wanted to see ah, how they got here. on the last they thousand went years back you know? and they were looking for they obviously checked the sphere data and they obviously heard about this great captain called John Luke Picard and they went back to the tree that he carved his initials into and were hoping to see a holographic booby. That was <laughs> Well, yeah, the sphere, yeah. sphere data wouldn't have that. Ah, it um, does. It knows all. No. <laughs> I'm only no, no. messing it, it had 100,000 years I, of history I, I, in it, but not the future. When I seen the tree, I was there like, I wonder would they have John Luke Picard's yeah. <laughs> initials <laughs> mm. in that tree. I, I, I was Riker and Troy just... were here. Yeah, forever. <laughs> no, 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 no. Riker never said he wrote on a tree. Picard definitely no. did. Um, okay, that's that's a fair point. So you you weren't. I I liked the idea of the tree. I I kind of thought like yeah, no, I know, did Tilly like it. Yeah, rambling, and I thought it was really nice. I liked the way as well. Tilly getting stroppy with Sura saying, "Here, pff, come on, give us yeah. five minutes." Like, and he I was know, nice yeah. enough to, uh, you know, say, "Yeah, yeah come on, I'll have your five on. minutes." But we're busy. Um, Damien to you um, I'm going to go with a 3.2 3.2 because I'm not like a couple of things kind of stood out for me um, and maybe you can answer them and I might raise my score but um, it turns out Starfleet isn't on Earth anymore okay okay that's fine but do you remember when um, Michael met um, Sahil at the station and he's like, oh, there's only three Starfleet ships um, in the sector traveling around. Mm -hmm. um, why didn't they just go to one of those ships? Obviously, those ships know where Starfleet is, you know, yeah. uh, instead of this mystery of where are they? Um, I thought that was a little bit of a, a plot hole. I think that was kind of covered in the last episode where the, you know what I mean? Anyone could be flying a Starfleet vessel. Uh, no, they still could have. They should. They should have checked it out. They had a whole year, but you know, since we saw them, they decided they weren't going to do. They weren't going to pursue those, those ships in the year. They're going to just hang it. Hang on. If Discovery came along, they'd jump back to Earth. But apart from that, <laughs> yeah, I think with know, a spur, I know. A spur drive, you can just jump to Earth. But, I, I, and, it's a fair point. And 
But I get that. But like, wouldn't you think like they built it up to, the, to be this mystery and be like, okay, they're not here anymore. That's a bit of a surprise. But I know there's three starships flying around. Let's go there instead of let's dive into Adira's mind and thrill and stuff like that. <laughs> and oh, um, yeah, 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 yeah. my the only other thing as well is uh, I wasn't in love with the Earth Defense Force and yeah. like, wouldn't you? Okay, like they're gone so isolationist, they don't even leave their own planet to le- to know that actually it's people from Titan that are attacking us. Mm. Um, like, you know, patrol your own solar system. You don't need yeah. to have dilithium for that. Like there's a, f- a few little things that were just niggling at me. But um, listen, I- I'm looking forward to watching more, but it wasn't the best out of the three episodes. I'm still sticking with my 3.2. Okay, interesting, because I thought as well, like it, it, true bits and pieces after the burn and how they re... You know, when Earth was trying to get, they decided that their priority was to look after and rebuild Earth, which was an interesting line. So obviously it was kind of like, whoa, a lot of crap went down after the burn. So obviously, you know, they got themselves on their own two feet. They were, you know, they were happy enough. And instead of trying to patrol a sector or anything like that, because obviously because of raids from pirates and stuff like that, which does make sense to me that like any ship that's out there is a target. You know, just solidate back on your planet and get um, Iron Man's uh, Tony Stark's defense platform around the planet. You know, that's yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. It, it, it does to me just you know, and as the point that they were happy enough with Titan. You know, as far as they were concerned, like we know Mars is gone anyway, but uh, Titan. I'm like, oh, mm. sure there's other outposts, and yeah, that is a little bit of a plot hole for me. I think I'm gonna rate this episode at around. 4.2 I just I liked it I like where the shell's going so far they went back to Earth that's ticked the box for me Earth Defence Force we had fun with that on the Facebook page and I actually when I initially seen I didn't read the article and I went oh Earth Defence Defence Force uh, Linda your husband Alan came up with Fed and I was like oh crap yeah he's probably right <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah it's it, 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 I, I liked it in the sense that uh it's a different kind of universe and I've, I've seen similar comments coming back fr- about this episode but I just think it's a real cutthroat universe that they live in now I like the way as well that they established that they've moved from the beta quadrant to the alpha quadrant and that Michael has tried to contact well she's contacted Terry Elysium and never heard of her mother so where is mm. her mother and to me the burn is more and more starting to sound like an attack um, I and this kind of reminds me of a Stargate episode. Um, was it the a, a, a terrorist device or something like that? You know, specifically targeting um, the warp drive of starships. Mm. But the other interesting thing is that the lithium has dried up, so they were mm. looking at a workaround and they couldn't find one, which is a bit, yeah, kind of interesting. But like, mm. yeah, um, yeah, no, I'll stick with four point two. Um, there's there's one other thing that's kind of great in me uh, watching the last three episodes is I, I, in my opinion I think Giorgio is being heavily underused um, okay. because like like I I I, lo- I know we talked about her fighting and kicking ass but like that's all she's really been doing since yeah. season two is coming in and just mm. having a fight and like I think who said it and it you know it was what I was thinking anyway I think it was Trek on the Tube said it on Twitter it's like she's just being used as kind of like being snarky and quick witted um, on the bridge and I'm like this is the person that ran the Terran Empire and she's just kind of wandering the halls kind of being snarky and flirtatious I'm like please use her more like it's Philippa Giorgio and she's being acted by an amazing actor Mm. um and I'm just if if I see her in another one on five fight, I'll be like, oh, okay, oh, here okay. we go I again. Won't. I won't. <laughs> no, but like you know, like, but like yes. I, I, I'll still enjoy it. But it'll be like, <laughs> but please, you know, that, use her more. Uh, that yeah. she's yeah, that seems to be a call like from a lot of the fans before season three, where where a lot of the, the fans want to see more interaction with. The background cast, not so much Georgia, but I would put Georgia into that category. I, I would agree that she's not being fully used, and this was a shorter episode, so you know, like why have a forty-two minute episode when you can do an hour episode and you know give more screen time 
to the characters and give them a more beneficial storyline. Um, before we wrap up, guys, uh, Detmar, what's people's thinking there now? She seems to have gone a little mm. bit nervous. No, no. <laughs> Self protection is what I thought. Very much e- reminded oh, me okay. back to Spirits. season two when they, dest- de- they tried to destroy yeah. this discovery. So, any action yeah. that she, you know, where Suru kind of gave the command to, you know, put discovery in harm's way, she was opposed yeah. against it. And also, to me, I thought the reaction of how many dead. Mm-hmm. Um, was kind of a thing so I am more convinced it's more sphere and not control what or, do you or, think or unless, or unless, unless, she's, un- unless she's kind of uh, I don't want to oh, I don't want to talk about time again but unless she's experiencing different times or she's like okay. she has a vision of the future so, so yeah so that's an you interesting know how, yeah, like the the time crystal where it was out yeah. of its case and it had effect on yeah crew member. Yeah, okay, that's a good. So unless point. she's getting flashes of what you know possible futures and actually that that totally mm-hmm. reminds me of the last episode of season two, or the last bit of season two where mm. uh, Michael experiences what's going to happen and she's like, oh no, this and this Jet happens, also you know. has yeah. those flashes as well. And yeah. Damien, what are you thinking? Like, I don't think it's control. I think that's just, I think that's all done with. Mm. Um, I think that's signed, sealed and delivered. And I, I don't know of a good reason why it should be the sphere data because why would the sphere data need Detmer? It was already able to control Discovery yeah. uh, autonomously. Um, so to take over the helmsman, um, I, I don't see a reason. And when all of this happened, it was just after she took a tumble over and uh, she was scanned and there was no concussion and stuff like that I, I honestly I just don't know I don't know of a good reason why it's controlled or mm. the sphere data either okay. um, it might be something else okay. it might be something else I'm, 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 mm-hmm. I'm kind of thinking that like it's it's it's, it's trying to ex- the sphere data is trying to express itself it's trying to get out there so I think that's going to lead to being an AI and discovery mm. that's my theory anyway but interesting to hear what, what you guys thought so anyway mm. I think we will wrap it up there. Um, but before can, we do that, uh, d- can, yeah. can I just, ju- sorry, Chris, but I just um, want to get one thing off my chest about the dilithium. Mm. It, it was that all active warp, um, warp cores just went boom. Yeah. So anyone yeah. who was, anyone who was at warp yep. exploded. So mm, not necessarily, well, that's you know, what, active, that's what Saru, active, active warp cores. So that's what, well, that's what they asked Saru how to just survive the, bur- the burn. Yeah. He said we were at warp at the time. No, so he said, weren't no, at they warp. weren't at warp. No, but that's why. Yeah, that's sorry. They weren't at warp, but that's why they survived. So the percentage of ships who weren't at warp at the time. Like, I it's more than three think ships. with the burn, my way would be to explain it is any warp core that was active, as in online. So well, that's if, what I thought. Yeah, if the it could have been power in the deflector or something. Well, you well know. I, I think the simple way is putting it in. Uh, Starship it docks in at space dock, and the warp core is still on. We've seen we've seen it before. The warp core is still going. Ba-dum, ba-dum, ba-dum. It's the heart mm. power on all the ship. Mm. Now you can't take that offline. Um, so anything that was online would explode. So like how many warp reactors are out there or anything that is dilithium based, which would have caused a huge devastation. But it, it is an interesting one because it's kind of like yeah. it, it's wide open. And that's where I'm thinking that they're getting the they're getting kind of a storyline from Stargate Atlantis. Now, before people criticize, like, you know, I'm not ever going to criticize, you know, so what if it's 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 like uh, Gene Roddenberry's other one? What, what, what was the show called? Um, Andromeda. Andromeda. Uh, Andromeda. You yeah. know, I liked the kind of Battlestar Galactica reference with the combat. Just put, you know, that's that's a human trait anyway. When people lose people, to put you know pictures of people up. They put combats up on an area, mm-hmm. which is which, which which is cool. So like you know, if the storyline's really really cool, that's where I'm actually starting to begin. That like the burn is an attack, but I like the way it's left open. But it's a funny one that like it's 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 a mystery for over a hundred years. No one's actually got it- to the bottom of it. Yeah, it is very much like Andromeda, like the Commonwealth has fallen and they, they, they were hidden behind, they kept within their own solar system at the end of it. Yeah. 
Um, so like it is very much like that but you know Star Trek is tell Gene Roddenberry their story you know <laughs> that's okay yeah. you, you know you, you can rob that one it's better than uh, you know what I mean there's more of a claim on that side of it than you know mm. taking out of episode but I, I don't mind when sci-fi franchises br- branch out you know what I mean it's yeah it's it's fine um, yeah interesting thought like because like yeah I'm glad you brought it up Linda because that, that mm-hmm. is another big topic it's the whole dilithium thing so like and, like, and what's powering the ships now? Like, well, no, you can like, still th- use warp. those big tooths you can that s- came up from the Earth Defense Force. They're they're massive ships, so there's still a little bit of dilithium out there. For I sure. I don't think Earth the way it was kind of semi described, and this is probably why Earth hasn't kind of bothered protecting. It, I don't think those ships would have been controlled by dilithium, and I also think as well that they're defense purpose only. Um, so mm. do they need to have dilithium? I think judging by it like the reference that Earth's hoarding dilithium kind of a shield that's power hungry yeah you know? but I, I think to me the way Earth's sitting on dilithium tends to me that Earth is kind of being like we're not going to use it we have it in case we need it but we're mm. scared so and mm. devastation planet wide and they had to rebuild so yeah I think anything that was running on by lithium kind of went boom as in how much of an explosion yeah so earth could have been fairly fairly rocked so again when you look mm. at the, the, the as you were pointing out holes in the storyline i can kind of see okay mm. over 100 years to rebuild a planet and get a back like why would you worry about anywhere else let's get your own planet sorted and they've lost their way i know but like your own planet you know, you think you'd worry about your own solar system, not true. just your planet. Yes. Like, true. You know, I would. Um, like there would, there should be a lunar colony. Um, Mars is gone, um, but yeah, surely yeah, there would yeah, be yeah. the other lunar. Yeah. Um, you know. the, the interesting thing is, next week we should get more answers because we're going off to mm. Trill, and I yes. know there's been some controversy over a human joining a Trill, but this has been done before in a TNG episode, and it is quite interesting. Anyone get the vibe of Esri? From Adira, yes. Yeah, I'm not saying. I'm, not I'm, really. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping <laughs> it's not a hair. Dax. Yeah, yeah. Um, I thought I thought Blue's acting was great. Um, yes, yeah, she yeah. she like her the little looks and the little micro reactions. Yeah, um, I thought were great. And yeah. her as you as you called out, Chris, her counterplay with Stamets, uh, was, Stamets was was good. And I think she's going to like come right in as an, as a. Uh, every episode actor filler for Discovery now Hopefully as well. Hopefully so. as, as well with more book as well, more Giorgio, more bridge crew, which is no easy feat for any any of the writers what we're demanding. Mm. But um, yeah, I like yeah, it's really really good, brilliant, and you know, I, anyone sense jealousy with Tilly? <laughs> <laughs> kind of. Like it's it's kind of like you know. I on don't know T- you anymore, uh, but I do. On TNG, <laughs> we have Wesley Crusher, and let's bring Tilly together. Like, how would Wesley Crusher react? You know, mm, there's another intelligent kid. This is not. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> so I got, got oh, yeah, that yeah, vibe yeah, from yeah. Tilly. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Which is kind of cool. You know, um, it's it's interesting. I'm looking forward to next week. Hopefully, you know, I think Linda, I think you you you've made some great points and why you've given this a mediocre score. And mm. for you, Damien, as well. So hopefully, you know, mm. going back to Trill, um, getting some of these answers, because we're not even guaranteed we're going to get all the answers, but hopefully we'll get more and actually know more about the burn and see where this whole storyline develops. Um, yeah. Yeah, okay. So you used to weren't rocked by it. I enjoyed it. I'm enjoying the flow of the season. Um, I yeah, we all always have these episodes. Probably next week, I think is probably going to be crap, and you two are going to probably love it. <laughs> but un- I, I will say it's nice to see uh, Romulan Ale make an appearance. So we know that the Romulans are still around now, a thousand yeah, years that's later. That's also making. Before we wrap up, that's also another kind of thing where yeah, I think somebody made a mistake on the canon. It's gas. We thought we'd get away from the whole canon, but book drinking <laughs> shots from Discovery and Burnham saying it's Intel has kind of sparked 
a debate <laughs> because oh, of no. Scotty. But in fairness, I think I seen oh. one fan's reaction and it was very, very good. Um, how do we know that Discovery wasn't the first ship to come oh, up yeah, exactly. with Sintel yeah. and then they got lost? It is a science ship. <laughs> You They're can't have drunk scientists. <laughs> so apart yeah. from having a quantum slipstream drive, they also came up with Sinta, Sinta Hall before anyone else. <laughs> and the Federation had to wait years until after Scotty came along to exactly. develop that technology. Yes, exactly. So before yeah. we wrap up, Damien, do you want to give us a shout out, a community shout out from YouTube? Yeah. Uh, YouTube from our last episode review. And uh, this is from Christopher McCooey. Like Great name. review, guys. Um, Zarya's murder Zarya's murdering in the local bar was gruesome but gruesome murders are the pirates uh, MO keeps the locals in line so it makes sense why it was so gruesome I think we call that out in the episode mm. review and um, he goes it may be just me but I found Burnham's uh, tractor beam rescue discovery from the parasitic ice mirrored discovery rescuing Burnham's shuttle from the nebula mm. parasites in the third episode of season one that just as nice. the shuttle rescue was Burnham's introduction into the new world Burnham's rescue introduces discovery into the future mm. which I thought was a cool counterplay that is a very well. cool I think counterplay. Linda you saw that on YouTube yeah, as well yeah, yeah I, like I, I was kind of like I was I was having a flashback to Europa but yeah the, the shuttlecraft with Lorca very good I yeah. like that mm. one mm -hmm. and Linda mm -hmm. from the Star Trek Discovery the unofficial fan page yeah um, well for this episode um, I was just going through the comments and I see Gabby kind of shares our thoughts she says I have to admit I'm a little disappointed with this episode the first two had wonderful pacing but here it left me with the impression of too many plots stuffed into too little time the earth titan solution felt like the good old TNG days set up a confrontation and then hush hush resolve it because time's running out <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah um, and how come that Stamets tells everything about discovery to somebody he just met the scene before uh, true spore drive like everything. somebody he just the, the scene before found out had sabotaged the ship um, hadn't they decided to keep Discovery's capabilities a secret this felt so weird <laughs> hope the pace gets mm. back to those of the first two episodes next week yeah that's exactly what we yeah and I, like I read that comment or reply I think someone turned around and said there was Stamets clever way of trying to get the truth out of it and I think that was in a result with Tilly as well because Tilly turned around how the hell do you get the truth out of a, a, a friggin genius at like 16 so Stamets idea mm. is just confront them with the truth very very starfleet and oh, you know should they give her the mushrooms old. <laughs> yeah they live in a museum <laughs> anyway guys yeah. on that note it is goodbye from me it's goodbye from me. <laughs> goodbye from me. Take care, folks, and catch you next week. <laughs>